J. Scott? Present. Okay, thank you. Thank you. You have, uh, Jay, you have five minutes. Thank you. I'd like to thank the budget committee for allowing us to comment on the budget for this coming year. Uh, I'm a resident, uh, my name's Jay Scott, as you heard. I, I'm a resident of Ward 5. Um, and I have a presentation that I'm going to basically read. Two allocations in this budget are particularly unpalatable, and as you heard over and over again yesterday, I'm not alone in finding them deeply problematic for many of the same reasons as expressed by previous deputants. The first is the $48.3 million increase to the police budget over last year's funding level, giving the police paramilitary powers and more literal cudgels to deal with poverty as they use force to destroy encampments is simply cruel and no way for an enlightened and compassionate society to address the most abject human misery. In a CBC interview on January 16th, newly elected Councillor Malik suggested that up to 18,000 people in Toronto now experience homelessness. I hope we never have sufficient police to bully them out of the only shelters they've been able to scrabble together merely to survive and to use a portion of that financial gravy to provide more armed enforcers in the transit system is also unacceptable, targeting, as they undoubtedly will, indigent members of society, bringing in a bully force just as fares are to go up and as service cuts are implemented is simply cynical and unnecessarily punitive when the recommendations going forward are to making transit free, as it is currently for some members of society. However, according to one source, this performance of police and similar enforcers to harass the poor and homeless appears to be intentional. Quote, by percentage, the biggest spending increases are going forward to the Office of Emergency Management and the Mayor's Office. For the Office of Emergency Management, the increase is due to providing funding for 10 positions to, quote, support the management of encampments, close quote. My recommendation is that the police get not one more cent to persist in their incompetence to handle poverty, homelessness, and the mental issues of unhoused and racialized residents. Due to the ongoing evidence of excessive use of force, the existing police budget should be cut progressively year by year so that they are not the second largest slice of Toronto's budget. In fact, in 2023, they should give up 9% of their existing budget to cover the service cuts to the TTC, because transit is now also acting as shelters for members of our community living on the street. Another serious objection is to spending $2 billion to refurbish the gardener instead of improving transit in order to improve our air quality and an urgent reduction in emissions. Wasn't that the point of declaring a climate emergency as far back as 2019? So I recommend closing the gardener entirely and redirecting the funds saved by implementing transform TO and net zero commitments through, but not limited to, the funding of housing retrofits and active transportation measures. The proposed 9% cut in TTC service times and the increase in fares are particularly egregious since they appear to be part of the funding vehicle to fix those problematic spending allocations. A failure to augment service rather than improve it will undoubtedly lead to lower ridership with a further loss in revenue. And so transit's downward spiral continues year after depressing year. The property tax increase for this year, which I've supported in the past, is useful only if some of the most questionable expenditures come off the table. A tax hike alone without implementing and enforcing a more comprehensive plastics ban and addressing housing, retrofits, transit, food security, and mental health issues, among others, is unacceptable and feels irresponsible. In addition to not approving some of the proposed expenditures, there are suggestions to address the city's huge shortfalls with, ensu excuse me, with ensuing impacts on our climate crisis. One recommendation is to enact a commercial parking levy. Other revenue generation could come from raising the cost of parking, redirecting to the city a portion of income tax and a recovery of one cent of the sales tax that would include a mechanism to provide rebates to low-income residents. 
Too few allocations in the proposed uh, budget will lead to reduction in emissions, temperature rise, or progressive equi equity for all residents. All signs point for the need to act immediately. With every means, the city's disposal to halt a devastating climate catastrophe. Can you please wrap it up? You're over five minutes. Thank you very much for this opportunity to comment. Thank you. Pardon? Yes. Question, Councillor Holiday. Yes. Thank you. Um, I thought I'd take the chance because the the parking levy has come up uh, by many people, and I, I'm going to guess there's probably many different thoughts to it, but. How would you envision that being applied? You know, wh who would we charge a levy to and in, in what locations and who would pay it? Oh, well, I, I imagine the city would have the resources to do that uh, oh, analysis. Sure. But, but who, where, where would you, you know, citizen, where would you, where would you like to see those taxes go? Like, like I should frame it correctly. Come from where, where? Yeah, come from. Thank you. Where, what what spots would you like us to to put a levy on? Well, I think uh, commercial, large commercial enterprises, uh, the malls, for malls. one. Okay. Um, and perhaps where uh, residents come into large parking lots to, from outside the city to and uh, enter the city and conduct business here. That that could be a source as well. I understand that they, uh, there's concern about small malls with uh, struggling businesses, so perhaps those would be uh, taxed at a lower rate. Well, let, let's play that out. Um, Sureway. Do you know Sureway? I've been there. Right. A few so, times. Yeah. <laughs> as I think uh, only of, a few. <laughs> as most in the room. How do you think it would play out at, say, Sureway, for example? Um, Suddenly, the, the landlord gets a tax bill for a lot of money. It's a big parking lot. What, what do you think would happen? How would this play out? I just, and, and I just, I want to do the thought process because I want to make sure that you're happy with this. What do you think would happen next? Would well, they, if that's the way it's collected, I think that's problematic. Well, how else would they collect it? Well, at the entrances. Oh. Oh, so, okay, so the vision is if you drive into the lot, you'd... That's a suggestion you're asking. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. all right. So, yeah, so that, that's very helpful because that's totally different than what I thought, and that's the purpose of the question. So mm -hmm. the idea would be something that's paid for by the driver as opposed to the landlord. Yeah, I think it's less uh, okay. administrative hassle and uh, probably fairer. Okay, no, I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? 